It was about two weeks ago now that I attended the largest and easily arguably the world's best hi-fi show, the Munich High End Show, which is held in May every year at the MOC Exhibition Center, of course, in Munich, Germany. And it's about my fifth time attending the show, so the novelty of being there has very much worn off for me. But I'm still always in sheer awe of the size and scale of this show and the sheer amount of organisation that must go into it to make it what it is. And that is also from the exhibitors, the effort and organisation they put in to make this show what it is. And I have a great example of this for you. I asked ESD Acoustic, the manufacturers of that huge horn system that everybody's been talking about. How much shipping weight was it to take all that equipment to the show? And they told me it was five tons. So just think about that for a second. They shipped five tons of hi-fi from China to Munich for a four-day hi-fi show so that mere mortals like me and you could you know, just get to see, let alone listen to a, a hi-fi system like that that you know I didn't even know existed. It's something quite you know, as extreme as that. So I think regardless how you feel about a system like that for its very <laughs> outlandish maybe design and very, very high cost, I see it as a kind of one-off, maybe a one-off life opportunity to see and listen to a hi-fi system of that type of design and that type of nature. So I see that as a real treat. And the Munich High End Show is full of those one-off, you know, real treat opportunities. And I'm gonna give you in this video some of the things that stood out to me. But before I do, I just want to show you some more of that, you know, high-end hi-fi B-roll to really kind of give you and show you just some of what I experienced and saw at the show.
So as you can see, there is an insane amount of hi-fi and headphone equipment that you can see, touch, ask about, and listen to at the high-end show. But I will admit that most of it is very, very expensive. Because it's very expensive, it kind of becomes very exclusive. But this year felt probably the most value balanced of all of the years that I've attended this show. And even the show's organizers were asking certain industry professionals, not me, but they are certain industry professionals to present starter hi-fi systems, systems that cost under 5,000 euros. So the organizers were trying to make the show more inclusive. So it's an interesting one because in a way I can appreciate the very high end of stuff and the exclusivity of that because I feel like we are all we're all aspiring to that, aren't we? We're all trying to, you know, in, in our own ways, in our own paths, trying to aspire to you know, really own and have the best hi-fi systems that we can. That's part of the fun, that's part of the journey. But actually when I think about it, a hi-fi show that is offering not just something for everyone, but I think lots of some things for everyone. And therefore, it's more inclusive, you know, it has more inclusivity rather than exclusivity. It's got to be the best way to go for the future. Now, I'm sure some of you, maybe even most of you, would have watched John Darko's video for the Munich High End Show. And he mentioned, and in a way kind of complained about the, the noise, the ambient noise of the show. Yeah, there is a hell of a lot of ambient noise, especially on the Saturday morning. The Saturday morning was so busy, it took me over 20 minutes just to get into the show because everybody who attends the show has to have a ticket scanned and have a wristband installed. And the organization, the people that work there, they're, they're incredible. They run the show like with military type of precision, but they're also very, very strict on access. Nobody gets access to that show before 10 a.m. And they're very, very you know, organized in that fashion. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But the Saturday morning was so busy. In my last video, the part one video that I've created, if you listen to the interview that I did with John Hunter from Rail Acoustics and also Miles Roberts from iFi Audio, those are the last two interviews, I think, of that of the, the part one video. Listen to A, the background noise, the ambience of the noise. But also listen to the intensity of us speaking into a you know a microphone that we're holding in our hands. There was so much noise that we had to. You know, it, 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 it had to because the tension of all those people made you feel a certain way. But what is so interesting about that is for me that's atmosphere. This noise, all the people hustling around, all of the you know people trying to do things, and the fact you're part of that. That is what creates the atmosphere. And that's so, so important. I think anybody who's attended an event like this will agree with me like that. That atmosphere, the feeling you have when you're there, the atmosphere kind of lifts you up. It, it, it makes you more active. It, it pumps you up and makes you want to be, you know, I want to go around. I want to see everything. Wow, if I don't go there, I'm going to miss out. That person's going to see something that I'm not. So yeah, the noise is a thing. But it's also the atmosphere, because on the Thursday and the Friday and the Sunday, those were much calmer, quieter days. The ambient noise was much lower, and the atmosphere was not quite the same. So yeah, the Saturday was crazy busy, but the, I think the energy of the, all those people, all those audiophiles, their excited, pumped up audiophiles, was infectious. And I think that's something that we need to yeah, not, not overlook as, as being important. And then in John's video, he also mentioned about the, the doors, the heavy doors that shut all the time dung, for those doors. And that is definitely a thing. I think he's right to, to mention that. But really, it's not such a big deal. And I'll tell you for why. Most of the rooms that the manufacturers or exhibitors are in are large rooms. So what they often do is separate those rooms into maybe an entrance area. And then you kind of go through that entrance area to the system demonstration area. And what that does is that creates less of a bottleneck through the door. And if you compare the Munich show to a hotel hi-fi show, where you often have this tiny little corridor and then maybe a bedroom that's being exhibited in, those corridors between, the, you know, those entrance corridors between the main corridors and the, and the bedroom, those act like choke points, a bit like, you know, in the movie 300, where 300 can, you know, hold that hot gates. That's exactly what it's like at hotel Hi-fi shows, so it only takes maybe two people to stand in that little corridor, that little choke point corridor, and you can't get in and out of that room. Whereas 
at the Munich show, yes, we have these big heavy doors, but I think there was only two occasions on the Saturday when it was really, really busy, where I could not get into the room that I wanted to get into because it was so busy and there was people kind of choking the entrance. All of Thursday, all of Friday, all of Sunday, and the majority of time on the Saturday, it was easy to get into every single room and out of every single room that I wanted to. But the big door thing is a, is a thing, right? So because I'm aware of this, even with a big camera, a big tripod, and a huge bag on my back, I was able to get in and out of those doors and softly close the doors behind me every single time. So if you're attending this Hi-Fi show, just be mindful of those doors are gonna bang. So just take an extra minute every single time you go through a door, just softly close those doors, and then that problem is no longer a problem. So for me, this is something that the, the attendees have to think about as much as the exhibitors and manufacturers. But what's also interesting for me is I didn't want to go into every single listening room. And this is my big complaint for the 2023 high-end show. As I was walking along some of the corridors, looking into this big glass doors and windows, you can see into them to see what sort of system is in there. And as I was walking along, I would look through that window. Wow, what's going to be interesting? What do I want to go and see and listen to and put on camera? And there's a fine line, I understand it, there's a fine line between creating a quite a dimly lit room with this nice kind of, you know, audio file vibing atmosphere. There's a fine line between that and having the room that's so dark that you can't really see into there. And as I would walk along, I'd look in these windows, it's like, they're so dark. Some of the rooms were so dark, all I could see was a silhouette of a pair of speakers. So I had no idea what speakers were in there, no idea what system. And I actually thought there's no way I'm gonna get good video in there. So it was like a deterrent for me to want to go into that room. Whereas other rooms, the exhibitors had really thought about the presentation of the room in terms of the lighting. So you could see what was in the room and you could see and you know the speakers and such, and especially if they're big speakers, to me that's a draw. When there's so much to see at Munich and half the time people are probably just floating around, floating between rooms, come out of one room, walk along a corridor and they're looking for something really exciting to listen to. And if you have that looking nice lit up as an exhibitor, I think that will pull more people in. Now I actually think better advice would be for the exhibitors to really think about the quality of the lighting that they're using, and maybe even invest in professional, that doesn't have to be expensive, but professional quality photography or video lighting. Because everybody who attends a hi-fi show like this, they're all taking photos with their phone, they're all taking video with their phone. And all of these photos and videos are gonna end up on social media, and they're gonna end up being seen by, you know, audio files all over the world. So if you make your system look really nice using professional quality lighting, well then that's gonna translate into better pictures and better video going out to everywhere. So obviously I look at this in a, in a, in a selfish way. Personally, kind of a selfish from my own point of view, but I also see people taking photos all the time with their phone and they're all gonna look better, the better quality of the lighting. And I've got a great example of this. Peak Consultant had their new speakers on display with the audio net, a big audio net amplifier. And they just used quite nice quality white lighting, like daylight type lighting. And the speakers look really nice. They popped off of the background. The amplifier looks really nice. And it was just done well. And obviously the better the quality of the lighting, if you're in that room, what you see with your eyes will be better as well. And then one manufacturer that always makes their room look really special is Karma, the Dutch manufacturer of very high-end hi-fi components. And I actually have an interview with them to show you. So I'm with Vincent from Karma, and we've just been listening to the Enigma Veyron 2D speakers, yeah. if that's correct, and it sounds amazing in this room, and this room always is beautifully designed. And I was just standing there doing some video work, and I realized I didn't know much about Karma as a company, I didn't know anything about the speakers, so thank you for coming on camera mm -hmm. and talking to me. So can you please tell us maybe a little bit about the Enigma Veyron 2 speakers, mm -hmm. please? It's uh, the most expensive uh, lineup from, from Karma. Uh, what makes it special? Special. The material is made of bullet wood. This is very uh, hard material. In acoustic, uh, it's very. All the units are made by Karma. All the magnet system behind the speakers mm -hmm. is a, a design from Charles Van Ossum, the owner and founder of Karma. Mm -hmm. Um, this particular is a special color and uh, with Kevlar and, 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 and special paint. We are uh, playing with uh, the amplifiers also in the, the Veyron line. 
the preamplifier is the exquisite uh, preamplifier. Um, all cables we use is Karma. Uh, some are the Karma uh, Faron uh, lineup. The front end is from MSB with the Pink Found uh, streamer we use. Um, we also have a turntable uh, from a Dutch company and um, yeah, the Luxman as well. Uh, yeah, and that's the, the Karma is um, for now you maybe four years is introducing this, this model. And um, the tweeters are all diamonds. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's in short what it is, yeah. because there's a lot of technique behind this speaker, but it's, uh, it's too long for... Uh, can I tell you a little bit about the drivers? How do you get the finish like that on the speaker drivers, please? The speaker drivers is a special uh, uh, material. Uh, it's a uh, 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 carbon material. There are um, uh, very few uh, factories you can make this high level materials. It's only used in, uh, in uh, space craft and, uh, and uh, we use it in, in this uh, driver setup as well. It's very stiff and it's, it makes the, the driver so fast, what you hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting because looking at that, I would say that came off a spaceship, but that would be <laughs> not too untrue then if that's yeah. kind of an aerospace design. <laughs> I, I must say your room's always amazing, yeah. the, d the decor and everything, but the speakers and everything's just amazing. So yeah. thank you for coming on camera. I really appreciate thank it. You you. Thank, you, thank, thank, you. You, thank you. Thank you. Another manufacturer that I think got it right in terms of their room, in terms of the decor, was Vienna Acoustics because they had a very big room, a very light room. And they didn't really do huge amounts of the room, but what they did do just made uh, made the difference. They created like a, a delicate feeling room, quite a feminine actually feeling room, which suited perfectly to the speakers, the brand new speakers that they were demonstrating. So I just think they got it right. I think they, you know, they got, yeah, it just was nice. It was a nice room to be in. And I have an interview with them as well. So I'm here with Pieta and Maria from Vienna Acoustics, who are showcasing a world premiere brand new speaker called Mozart. And I was speaking to you guys before, and it's a really interesting speaker because it's a different take on an active speaker. So can you maybe tell us a bit about the speaker system and what makes it unique in 2023? This is our new speaker called Mozart Infinity. And the special thing about it, it offers every single option you know you, you need. I mean, all streaming services like Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, Cobus, we are room ready. It's a full, maxed out, real high-end music system with also with all possible connections on the back side. We have even HDMI, we have all optical inputs, we have analog inputs. So you can also connect your, you know, TV to it. So, so really it's a hi-fi system in the speakers, isn't it? That's like the, the bit that's important. Don't need anything exactly. else anymore. It was a long year development. Peter Gansterer, founder and, and designer since 1989, <laughs> he was able for the first time to create a complete system. You know, he, he, he took the amplifier, he took the sc sc screamer, he could decide the DSC, the quad-core processor. He could test it in combination. Even the cable is a Vienna Acoustics cable. So for the first time, he was able to create an organic whole. And we are so fortunate because the feedback also here is absolutely wonderful. I think what's interesting about the speaker system is that it's an active speaker system, but with passive crossover components. Right, this is Peter. Ah, so we've, we've an amplifier in just one of the speakers. So essentially it's more like a traditional hi-fi speaker, but with the convenience and flexibility of a very modern speaker system. Is, right. is that kind of bridging the two? So can you tell us why the decision was made to go that way? For Peter, all that matters is the sound. Excellent. Well, I've had a little listen. They sound really fantastic, really smooth, really musical, really easy going. You've got a beautiful room here at the thank Munich High End so Show. So thank you for coming on camera with me. Thank you. Thank you Cheers, guys. Thank, thank, thank you. you. So much. Thank you. And then my last interview from the high-end show is with a very interesting speaker manufacturer, Aratai 
Audio. And I think they're a Latvian-based manufacturer. And their speakers are high efficiency. They use a waveguide which is protruding out of the top of the speaker in quite an interesting fashion. And yes, they had a very dark room. <laughs> I did mention it to them. But, you know, I didn't think that was necessarily the best way to go. But either way, it doesn't matter. Their products are really interesting and I have an interview with them as well. I'm here with Yanis from Aratai Speakers. And Yanis, I've seen a number of your press releases for your speakers come through to me. And I've always been interested to find out a bit more about their design because you've got what well, I wasn't sure whether it was a waveguide or a horn, you know, coming off the top of the speaker in with a, a, you know, the rest of a very interesting design. So can you tell us about Aratai speakers, please, and what makes them unique in the hi-fi space in 2023? Many say they are really different. And uh, the main difference is the bass quality. And the second one is how they interact with the room, because uh, most speakers need to have some room treatment to sound them right in the rooms. Uh, while we design our speakers to be uh, room agnostic from the very beginning. And uh, this way, as you see, we don't have almost nothing here for room treatment because we don't need it, actually. Interesting. And, and can you tell us about the, the what I now know is a waveguide on the top? And why is it on the top? And what, what makes this an important part of the speaker's design, please? Uh, the waveguide is like a shallow horn. Uh, it doesn't have this, uh, those issues that are typical for horns, for some horns or most horns. So uh, they, their main function is to disperse high frequencies wide. And this is what makes the difference. And this is what makes uh, the speakers room agnostic because the high frequencies are reflected in the same uh, energy level as in the direct signal. Okay? And these are uh, good reflections. They make sound lively. They, uh, they don't need absorbers uh, that uh, should kill excess mid-range reflected. So uh, the balance reflected sound balance is almost, uh, almost the same as the direct one. And of course, waveguide helps also for um, uh, as being acoustic load to the driver. They also lower the distortions and give some extra sensitivity. We have the smaller ones are 87 dB. We cannot get. We couldn't squeeze out more because uh, of the size of the speaker. And if we want the bass extension down to 30 hertz, it's uh, it should be around 87 or or less. So uh, uh, it's at four ohm speaker. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, and it's priced to 9,000 uh, euros, including VAT. Then uh, this mediums Contra 200 F uh, is. Um, 95 dB sensitive at 8 ohms and uh, our flagship is 96 dB also at 8 ohms and uh, all impedance uh, for uh, impedance of all speakers are very amplifier friendly which is important it doesn't go below 4 ohms on the smaller ones and below 6 ohms on, on the large ones most of amps we have uh, listened to uh, didn't have issues because of uh, the speakers but what we heard is the clear differences between the sound of amps, uh, especially in distortion. So you could hear uh, with our speakers uh, how amps distort differently. And, uh, but in, in frequency range, they are mostly the same, but uh, for smaller ones, you need uh, more powerful amplifiers, uh, starting with uh, 100 watts compared to the flagship, uh, which uh, uh, can handle 12 watts, and that's enough. So. <laughs> Of course, you can drive them up to 300 or more. So, oh, wow. so, yeah. so, high, so potential for high sensitivity and high power. Right. Uh, that makes them very interesting. They've got a very interesting look. Um, I can't wait to listen to them, actually. So can we have a listen? Is that OK? Sure. Yeah. So what were the best bits for me, the best standout bits for me from the Munich High End Show 2023? Well, the best one for me, and this is going to sound really, really cheesy, but the best bit of this show for me was talking to people, meeting people, meeting people from the industry. That's always, you know, interesting and beneficial, as you can imagine. But really, it was meeting some of you, meeting some of you. You know, when people come up to you and they talk to you and they say they've been watching your channel and they appreciate what you do, there is, of course, nothing more personally, you know, satisfying and gratifying than that. And a great example was I met a lovely couple, English couple, just in one of the corridors, they came up and spoke to me and they thanked me for 
some of my reviews because those reviews had helped them build their system. And when we was talking about their system components, those were videos that I'd created years ago. So they've obviously been watching me and this channel for a number of years. So of course, that was very, very lovely. If you watch, if they're watching this video, thank you. But what about the systems? The systems that, you know, all these amazing systems, which ones stood out to me? Now, I need to be honest, when you're doing video of the type that I do, <laughs> when you're trying to get a system on on camera, when you're trying to think of interesting angles or you know what what's going to be interesting from a video point of view, normally that means you're in a position for where the, the audio is the worst. Like the, the great example is you know, down on the floor, the angle, the kicked angle up, you know that that down across the system kind of angle. I'll show you an example on the screen. Now, as you can imagine, when you're down on the floor in the corner of the room, nothing sounds good there. So when when you're thinking about a video, how's this gonna be made? How's this gonna look? What What's gonna be an interesting focus? You're not really concentrating on the audio. It's just, you can't do both. It really is impossible to do both. So I didn't actually get good listening time and good positions in the room for many systems. But one system I did was the brand new Audio Lab 9000A with the brand new, not even out yet, Audio Lab 9000N, the new network streamer with the Wharfdale Dovedale speakers. I actually sat and listened to them with a beer for about 45 minutes after the show finished on Friday. And I had the Dovedale speakers designer, Peter Como, who I know quite well now, having interviewed him a few times, he was playing DJ and he played a whole variety of music. And I just sat there, relaxed, with a beer, in the best seat in that room, again, for 45 minutes. And I was happy, very, very happy. So just, I could have sat there for hours. So that was, of course, a very standout experience for me. And it has a great sounding system, very relaxed, enjoyable, you know, big scale actually, considering the speaker size for the size of the room. So yeah, that was a, a very standout experience for me. Then the next standout experience kind of is, again, I spent quite a bit of time in the custom dedicated cinema that was built. And this was a big cinema, really. I think, you know, had sofas, enough seats for about 30 people in a proper dedicated built cinema. And the cinema was uh, components of, I think there was 15 Perliston speakers, 9.6, I think it was, seven Perliston subwoofers. So it's a pretty big system before you even start. Then there was a Storm Audio processor, a Storm Audio power amplifiers, and they was running Dirac Live's new ART, ART technology. So it was the first time people really in the world got to experience what Dirac's new ART technology could do. And this is why I had kind of access to this system more than more than some of the others. And then I think it was a 150 inch screen. It might have even been bigger than that. And the screen was by a German company called Hollywood Screens. It was a very, very impressive screen. It was acoustically transparent, but you could not tell at all. Such was the quality of the image and the fine weave of the screen. And then probably the star of the show was the Barco it was the size of a fridge, a huge Barco laser projector. And that projector with that screen produced an amazing image considering, yeah, the cinema was pitch black for high end you know, projection purposes, but there was also a lot of ambient light coming in because they had to leave a, a, a certain amount of ambient light for health and safety regulations for the show. But even with the ambient light, I think that is the best projected image I've ever seen. The color quality, the contrast, the brightness, and then the pop of the image was very good TV-like from a huge projection screen. So yeah, it was amazing actually, <laughs> the image. And then the whole sound demo, an organized, structured demos that they was running was, I think easily the most impressive thing. This overall experience, the cinema experience, obviously it's different to the hi-fi experience, but the way it was put together, it was probably, yeah, the most impressive overall demo that I experienced at the show. And we're talking a big ticket system here. It's easily quarter of a million euros or pounds worth of equipment here. So it's a big system, but that's not uncommon for Munich. So yeah, that was, you know, I've just got to say well done to all the guys involved in putting that whole thing together, setting that all up and making that what it was. It was super, super impressive. But some of the other things that stood out to me at the show, one was definitely the new Dali Epicor 11, the new speakers, because I think I heard really good potential in them. I liked their sound, but 
I think outside of the suboptimal show conditions that they were in, they could have been, could be really, really impressive. So I, I like, listened to them a few times. I really like them, and I heard a lot of potential in them. So that stood out to me. Another really interesting presentation, actually, that stood out to me was Roy Gregory. Roy Gregory, obviously, is a reviewer. He's been in the industry a very long time, and he was in the CH Precision Room giving a presentation on phono stages and phono stage curves. And he was explaining that with a lot of old pressings, Original first pressings, they don't necessarily, they haven't always used the rear curve and they've used other curves. And I think this is based around CH Precision's phono stage designs where they have all of these different curves built in. But it was just the way he gave the presentation, the knowledge he was imparting and the passion for the music and the records and everything, it was just a really enjoyable, I just enjoyed it, I got a lot out of it. And then the sound demos that he did to back up everything that he said were very easily audible, if that makes sense. So I just enjoyed that presentation, it was really very good. And then the last <laughs> thing that stood out to me was the big horn system, but not the one that you're thinking of. There is a chap who always takes big, very, very old Western electric horn speakers to the high-end show. And this is because he has a real passion for them. I don't think he sells them. I don't think it's like a, a refurbishment and sell them on business. I think he just genuinely has a passion for these old, really cinema, big horn cinema speakers that he likes to share. And there's always a really interesting turntable in this room with silver tone amplifiers. And it's just a different vibe, I think, because of that. It's just a different vibe anyway because of the sound, but because of the intent of what this room is really for. And I was lucky that while I was in there, this chap was given a presentation. And it was interesting listening to him talk about different things, but he said a couple of things that stood, you know, that, that will stay with me, I think, forever. One of them was, he said, all of the other hi-fi systems here are using a thousand watts to create sound maybe for five people. These big Western electric horns were designed to use five watts to create sound for a thousand people. And I just think that's such a great way to talk about the differences in technology maybe over the last hundred years in speaker and amplifier design. What a great marker of that. But he also said something fantastic. He said, how many of these, you know, high-end, super high-end hi-fi systems will still be being played at this kind of level, at this kind of show, 97 years later? Because that is how old those big green horn speakers were. And that was just an, another lovely comment. So of course, somebody like this with that level of passion and enthusiasm aimed at those horn speakers, but really just their passion and enthusiasm for audio in general, I find massively infectious. So yeah, what, what a treat. This is back to what I said at the start of the video. What a treat to be able to, you know, see and listen to these, in a way, wild and wacky type of systems that you would never normally do in real life. So this is what, for me, the high-end show is all about. Yeah, it's great to go and maybe look at things you're considering buying, but it's also great to go to get experiences, one-off experiences most of the time that you might never normally get in your life. So to me, yeah, that is what makes it, all of these things really, everything rolled in is what makes this special. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed my part two, really, of you know my experience from the Munich High End Show 2023. And if this is the first video you've watched, this is part two. Please go and watch part one because you'll get a lot more out of part one. There's a lot of really you know good interviews there about new products and more in part one. So please go and watch that one. I'll link it up there for you. If this, if you've watched both parts, sorry, part one and part two, well then I can't thank you enough. I hope you've enjoyed both of them. And yeah, maybe I'll see you guys, I'll see you at a Hi-Fi show in the near future, or maybe I'll see you at the high end next year. <laughs>